Welcome to the discussion. In this session, we are going to understand about one of the commonly used terms in cloud infrastructure. They are regions and zones. Let's understand about this regions and zones with few uh, real-time examples or scenarios. However, uh, before getting into that, on a very high level, regions refers to a geographical location uh, like India, Australia, Singapore, New York, London, Paris, like that. Okay, And Jones refers to a data center that is operating within that particular region or within that particular geographical location. Okay, This is very high level. However, let's try to understand about regions and zones with an examples. Okay, Just consider that you have an application and uh, that application is deployed in a data center at Paris. Okay, uh, So at whatever application you develop right so in order to provide service or if you want to uh, operate that application if you want to keep that application in production uh, that application should be operating or uh, uh, running from any service at a data center right so just consider that you have an application and that application is deployed in a data center at paris region okay so in this scenario what are the challenges we face so challenge number one, uh, as it is uh, deployed at a data center in Paris region, there would be a high latency or slow access to the user uh, who, who is trying to access that application from other parts of the world. Uh, say, for example, if someone is trying to access that particular application from Australia or New York or Singapore, uh, there would be a high latency. Okay, And uh, this is one of the challenges. However, the application will be still available. And... Uh, if any user trying to access near to Paris, uh, the response time would be much good, right? Comparing to the user who is trying to access from uh, other parts of Paris. And uh, that is one of the challenge. So challenge number one is high latency. And challenge, uh, when I say high latency, it's only for the people who is trying to access from other parts of the world. And challenge number two is, as the application is deployed in one data center at Paris region, uh, just consider a uh, scenario that oh, what happens if that data center crashes or for any reason, if that data center goes down, then obviously our application will be unavailable. So in this case, the uh, application will go down, right? It will not be available for the end users. So what to do to overcome these challenges? Okay. So let's concentrate. Uh, let's first concentrate about this challenge two because challenge one. Uh, let's concentrate about it later. Challenge two is whatever happens, we want to keep that application available, right? So the main concern is if this particular data center goes down, uh, application will be going down. It will become unavailable, right? So in order to make it available, we should have a redundancy setup as like if one data center goes down, the application should be serviced or operating from the other data center, right? So in this situation, just consider that you have a two different data centers and your applications are deployed in both the data centers at the same Paris region. So in this situation in this scenario what are the challenges you would face still challenge one will remain the same it there would be a high latency for the people who are trying who are trying to access that application from other parts of the world as like uh, um, australia singapore india or new york right and uh, the second challenge right uh, what we discussed in the previous uh, scenario uh, what happens if one data center crashes application will be still available from the other data center the data center too okay and so because of that this particular challenge is solved okay but in this scenario now we have a new challenge what happens if in case the entire paris region goes down uh, maybe just consider an ex scenario as like uh, if there is a global outage in the internet service provider and uh, there is a kind of a situation where entire Paris goes down. Uh, so in this scenario, your application will be again unavailable to the users until it is restored, right? So this is the third challenge. So what if the entire region of Paris goes down or unavailable? Obviously, our application will be down or unavailable, right? So in that situation, what to do in order to make our application available, we can go for uh, other way okay this is what multiple regions deploying your application in multiple regions in the previous method uh, we concentrated about we discussed about deploying our 
uh, application in multiple data centers in one region but there is a chance that the entire region may go down or become unavailable right so in that situation we don't want our application to become unavailable for any reasons so to overcome the situation we can deploy our application in other regions as well like this uh, just consider that already we have this setup right we have two data centers at paris region uh, so that if one data center goes down obviously the application will be serviced from the other data center from paris and just consider that you added a new region uh, maybe mumbai from india and again from mumbai you have two different data centers and where your application is deployed in both the data centers at mumbai so what are the challenges now if you see the challenge one, uh, high latency or the slow slow access for the user who are trying to access from the other parts of the world, right? It's partially solved because in the uh, previous scenario, uh, th there would be a high latency for users who are trying to access from uh, Asia Pacific zone or the New York uh, U United States regions because the application is only deployed at Paris. But in this scenario, in this situation, we have deployed our application in two different regions. One is Paris and the other one is India, Mumbai, right? So as we have our application deployed at Mumbai, uh, comparing to the previous uh, method, comparing to the previous scenario, the latency would be much minimum uh, comparing to the previous scenario for the user who are trying to access from India or the other parts of uh, Asia Pacific zones like Singapore, Australia, China like that. So our challenge one is partially solved but still there would be high latency for the people who is trying to access the same application from United States or New York something like that right and uh, and that can be overcome by deploying our application in uh, uh, in a, uh, New York zone as well in New York region as well if we deploy an application in New York region obviously uh, this will be solved right and what is the next challenge it's the challenge two is already solved right if one data center goes down obviously we have another data center from the same region so uh, challenge two is already solved and challenge three as we discussed in the previous scenario what happens if one particular region is goes down uh, just consider that if paris goes down in, in our previous uh, slide we discussed about uh, the scenario uh, the consequence of uh, if paris goes down right so now if in case for any re uh, reason if paris region entirely goes down unavailable the application would be still available uh, and still it serves for the request from mumbai region so uh, though there would be high latency but still the application would be available it won't go down so this is what a region is hope you understand uh, uh, the importance of deploying your applications at different regions, right?